Today, we're gonna be raiding AI-generated cards. And like as Bulky says, uh, are they gonna Zyber? Will they be doable? Or will they danger? Alright, we're gonna start off with, uh, the Via Shane's Sejon. It's a green 2 generic instant. Target elf or creature is attacking. You must attack. If you didn't think you were attacking, you're attacking now. And I guess, I guess if you make it attacking, then it's... I don't know, it's vulnerable to anything that is attacking. Otherwise, scry two, then reveal the top card of each player's library. I think I'll scry this thing to the top and then reveal it to all of you. And then everyone else gets to see what everyone else is doing. Only bird, uh, sorry, only burst dring. He looted their axeweed fields and Tori Mox insides. And so the card doesn't really make sense. Uh, you can't already be attacking when you're not even in the attacker step, and also that flavor text is a huge flavor nothing. All right, moving on. We got the <laughs> the blazing Snoop. He's blazing, all right. What's going on over here? Is that a little bit of smoke that I see on the on the side over there? We, and of course, it's going to be green, green one generic because the blazing Snoop would all would all be about the green. It's a sorcery aura. Uh, as long as enchanted creature is red, it gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. <laughs> In their mind, I guess. As long as enchanted creature is white, it gets plus three, plus three. Technically, this works. It is a doable card. You full shizzle. I don't know anything about Snoop Dogg. Nothing. I'm a boomer, I guess. I'm gonna pass on the Snoop Dogg. This card actually works. The creature is red. It's a bit weird to give a red creature flying, but you know what? If they blazed hard enough, maybe they think they can fly. Uh, alright, we got the, uh, Eight Tenge Shrine. No, Eight. Eight, eight Tenge Shrine. Red, black, one for an enchantment. You may target the lost player. <laughs> I'm out of the game! What do you want to target me for? I'm out of the game! I died! No, I want you to draw seven cards. But I'm gone! I'm gone! That's hilarious! You can target the lost player. What, I can deal damage to them? I can stick it to them like... I, I don't know if you need the target for so for one reason or another. Maybe I can make them gain life and get back into the game. They went down to zero life. Alright, I'll give you... Uh, it's, it's a very awkward in the Rakdos deck. Maybe I can make them gain life. And then now all of a sudden they're back in the game. We don't have any cards like that. Like target player is back in the game or something like that. That is really innovative. Well, I mean, this, this is trying to interact with lost players. There's like different levels of the game. There's the people in the game. And then there's people who lost the game. But somehow they're still playing to some degree. I am the lost player with all the new cards printed these days. Yeah, we're, we're all lost in one way or another. Maybe you can steal opponents, players, creatures after they lost the game. Maybe. Maybe you could extend the rules to say that, like, the board state has to stay the same until the entire game is over. Because you never know if someone will revive you or take something from you. Normally, you can't take something from a person who lost the game, but... Aiton Shrine says otherwise. Really? Zyber's with me. I think this is a cool card. I think it's do- I, I also think it's doable. This card with trade secrets? Oh god! So basically the dead guy can uh, collude with you. Like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll let you draw as many cards as you want because those other players, they screwed me over. They screwed me. Uh, or the player who doesn't know how to get to- <laughs> I don't think that's what it's re referencing to. Where's your local game store? I'm on- My GPS isn't working. They haven't lost the game. They are lost, as in not found. This is an investigation. Zyber's big time. That's originality. All right. Well, we like in light. We at like Aitind Aitind Shrine. Wild card. Okay, we got the Mind Cannon. Is it will blow your mind, right? Right. All right. We got a black, black, two generic enchantment. Enchant creature. Enchant creature has pay to take an extra turn after this one. Oh, get out of here! Get, just get out of here. Enchant creature just 
pay t pay mana and get extra turns. And like in response to removal, I mean, someone has to kill the creature when you have mind cannon on stack. It's just that's a kill kill on the spot. This person's so big brain, they take any as many turns as they want. Definitely not busted. <laughs> what do you think? It's not busted enough. It's not even an aura. Whatever. We know what they we know what they were trying to do. Yeah, one card infinite combo. Well, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you don't have it, you need to have six mana up to activate this. Otherwise, it's like four black. You need, because if you just pit, tap out to pay four mana and pass the turn, you better believe that creature is the target of everybody. It's like, all right, we gotta, we either gotta kill that creature, or we gotta kill the player, and then we'll mine, we'll eight and shrine them back into the game if necessary. It works in my mind, so the name fits. The nose bone. <laughs> That's right. Look what the AI did here. It gave it gave a bone to the nose. This is like with infinite skulls on the internet, it doesn't know that there's no nose in place of uh, in the skull. Whatever. <laughs> Someone who's got their anatomy right. Uh, who said you have to cast it? Uh, what you're gonna regenerate? Were you gonna reanimate this thing like with replenish or something? Chant creature. You have to put it on a creature apparently. I think. Is it really a worse than looping time warp? Of course, it's like, oh, I, I guess it's a two card combo. You need to have the creature in play. What is wrong with you people? You want to ship this thing? I think this thing's completely nuts. It's, it's yeah, it danger. I think it's super danger. Mine can get out of here. Zarathur, thank you so much for the super sticker. I really appreciate it. Everyone enjoy that sticker. All right, well, I, I think two thumbs down for the mine cannon. Blow, blew my mind. Blows my mind how many people want to play that card. Okay, we got the Wind Strong. It's like Wind Stonge Titan. It's a Titan. It's a spirit. It's an 8 8 creature. For no mana. It's zero. It's a what? It's, the AI is like, you know what? Creatures don't need mana. That's. Who cares? That's. Uh, I mean, it, it's working itself to try to get this thing in play. Okay, what do we got? We got a Vigilance, Trample. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Windstonge Titan, this turn dies. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Windstonge Titan. So it ate it up. And Windstonge Titan's toughness is blue. Wow, we were so close to a real card. I mean, it's broken beyond belief. Imagine this, turn one Aether Vial, turn two, turn one, and still turn one Windstonge Titan. You just Vial that thing directly in play. It's got a convert mana cost of zero. Doesn't have a casting cost, but yeah, you can definitely uh, cascade. I don't know if it's the greatest cascade target. It's definitely pretty good. Yeah, vial again. Again, you can use the vial. You can use the as foretold. A lot of different ways of uh, cheating this. Apparently, blue toughness. How tough is it? It's blue. It's blue at its heart. Only in AI world will the toughness be blue. Other than that, neat creature. Winter. Uh, red. Instant. This spell costs two mana. Then why wasn't it there in the casting cost? Or I get maybe it's How does this work? What takes precedent? Can, is this like an alternate casting cost? You can pay a red or you can pay two generic. Anyway, it's also a really weird weird card that the card Winter is a red card. Um let's the game and anything you died combine in a disabotching played is every draft. Whenever chaos ensues, target player mills six cards. Believe it or not, if you can understand, if if you just read through this card, chaos will always ensue. There, therefore, target player mills six cards. And uh, this card doesn't make any damn sense to me. Whenever chaos ensues, that now that is what we can define as word soup. It's that is an example of chaos ensuing. The chaos did ensue on this card because you don't know what the hell it's doing. What, what, is it, what does it mean? Combine a disembatching played as every draft. Therefore, someone has to mill six cards. So it's a one mana mill. I think it's one mana. Maybe it's just red and like red at heart. But really, it's. I mean, it, it defines it. This spell costs two mana. I don't know what. I don't know what takes precedent. What is it? Stable diffusion. Is this just a means of uh, making the card? One red mana, spell cost two, chaos infuses from the first line. I suppose so. This card is chaos. Word salad shred into a lot of small pieces. Alright. Goodbye, Winter. Thank you for uh, defining word soup, though. 
Will chaos ensue for the rest of these AI generated cards? Thought? I thought it was gonna be thought leader bears. It's thought tealer bears. Uh, very strange looking art for a red one generic. Two five giant shaman. All right, so a bear in disguise with the void. It's like it's an Eldrazi. Ah, it's an Eldrazi underneath that bear. It's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. So you can pay a generic tap. We can see through it, Eldrazi. We can see the zipper on the bear suit. Put a time counter on target creature. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card uh, into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. How do we evaluate this card? Um, what is the point of the time counters? Does that, does that, does that make them suspend? Or is it just like a random counter that doesn't matter? And then we have Marvin saying the poor bear looks like it's devoid of life. Because it's not. So the Eldrazi do. They suck up all the life and resources from Zendikar. Danger. I think, it, well, I don't know. It might seem fair. It's like, that's still, okay, look. It's a two mana, two five creature at the very worst. Like, how do you evaluate that in draft? Oh, I can play my grizzly bear. All right, I play my grizzly bear with a gigantic butt. Big butt. Uh, is it cumulative upkeep? I don't know. Do you guys think it's danger? I think it's doable. I think it's doable. You know, if someone played this against me in modern, I mean, people would. I don't know if people. People would probably laugh at this. Be great blocker. It's kind of fair. It taps, so it's not really abusable for that one mana, and you have no control over what you draw. I just don't know what time counters do. That's right, cumulative upkeep needs time counters. So you give things cumulative upkeep? And then if, and hold on, does that mean it just kills the creature? Because you can't pay the cumulative upkeep by an extra, because most cards don't have cumulative upkeep. If I understand. Oh, cumulative upkeep is age counters? So this card is either doable or a danger. Uh, I'm gonna assume, oh, it's age counter, not time. Okay, whatever. I'll say we're gonna give it a pass. It is very bizarre though. Don't feel good about this pass. You know what? There's not a lot of things we can give a pass these days. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta lower the bar. We gotta lower the bar. Okay, we have Panjurganyu. It's a white, white, five generic for 3-3 three, three human knight. That is a very expensive knight. Flying. How? With all that armor? Okay, when, whenever Panjirong Yu attacks, if you cast a legendary spell this turn, you may play any card of your choice. Oh, that's pretty cool. There we go. And it's probably uh, well worth it. Seven mana. You have to wait a whole turn for this thing to attack. You get to, and if you cast, if you cast your commander effectively, you can play a new, you can play a card for nothing. You can uh, play a card from anywhere. That's good choice. Uh, good question. You may play a card. Any card of your choice, probably from exile. Yeah, if you can, if you can play cards from exile or play cards from your graveyard or you know anything that you would normally play, uh, I think it counts here. The Pandra, Pandragonu. Doesn't say for nothing. Oh yeah, that's true. Then it's useless. You may play any card of your choice. You know that's true. Did not specify for no mana. Uh, I already can play cards of my choice. <laughs> it, it, it does not say from library even, of course. You may play any card. Oh, hold on. Does that mean I can just like conjure cards? Maybe this just means I can con I can conjure stuff like. I can play any card of my choice. So I like I can choose Black Lotus. I could choose uh, Time Walk. But that would no, it may not. I could I could choose even more legendary cards. I could change like well, but I still have to pay for them, right? This is how I'm sort of interpreting this card. Play from exile or your opponents. Uh, maybe. Yeah, let me see your hand. I choose Charizard. I don't know if you can go that far. It has to probably be a legal. Magic the Gathering card. Eric loves the AI cards. Me too. Please more often. Well, I'm trying, you know, trying to pace it out so it doesn't get too old too quickly. Have to be. I think it has to be a legal card. I think it's basically conjure. And then if you can change, well, you can conjure Blight still, but you still have to cast it. Although you're not going to be too far. I mean, this thing already costs seven men. I think this is a cool card. I think it's a cool card. 
You can conjure, basically, you can conjure, if I understand correctly, you can conjure anything. Uh, but you still have to cast it. Still gotta cast it. Alright, moving on. Whoa, that guy's face. Don't forget that guy's face. Knives of the Only Dragon. It's a land! Oh, I'm, okay, I'm interested. There's not even any dragons in the picture. Uh, whenever a player casts a spell, that player may put a land card from their hand onto the battlefield. And this card itself does not add mana. And this actually helps everybody. The humans return to shame that roar contended. They're carried back in reminder of the twin. Oh, everyone remembers the twin. The strength together is it's become one to the run. Uh, the, the, oh, sorry, back in Remainer of the Twin, not the Reminder. Uh, I remember. <laughs> you know what? This card is, like, it's pretty fair. I mean, if you're the one who puts it in play, I mean, you, that, you, you, that costs your land drop for the turn. I mean, everyone else gets to benefit, gets to benefit more or less from it. Um, well, I don't know. I guess you get to benefit from it as well. So you put this in play, you cast a spell, you get to put a land in play. Uh, yeah, true originality. Very doable. Abzo lo loves the doable cards. Yeah, you have to have land. Yeah, you need extra lands. Also, this took up somebody's land drop and a card from their hand. Just play zero drops. Well, you know what? If you have a lot of zero drops in your deck, you probably don't even need lands. Like, what was the? What's even the point? <laughs> land storm. <laughs> hey, don't give the AI the AI any ideas here. Before we know, it, we are gonna have land storm. Knives should also have all lands have tap one add mana of any color. Uh, that would probably make this thing broken. You just have to cast little spells that draw cards, then storm off. But I don't think you're making really good use of the lands. So it changes mulligans, but your opponent doesn't know that. Exploration on. Yeah, I guess it's like exploration, except it's like everybody's exploration. And it's different. You have to cast spells in order to get those extra land drops. And then if you do that, like what do you, like if you tap out, for example, to play a spell, you get a land. Like what big use are you going to use out of it? So you're a little, you're still a little constricted on mana. You are ramping, but only for next turn, for the most part. I think it's a really cool card. Really original design. Um, and Rark Rosewater's, they, he was asked on, on, um, what is it called? Tumblr. Uh, about AI generated cards, he said it was just a matter of time before R&D is going to start taking inspiration from the AI. They might take inspiration from the knives of the only dragon. Would this be good with Cascade? It'd be useless with Cascade. This is a land. Strictly a land. Don't forget them dragons and the twin. Okay, we got Trick Mire. Another land. Alright, we can add, uh, it's like a waste. We add a colorless. Tap, add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast an instant or sorcery spell that hasn't been cast this turn. Neat! It's very much Zybers. So it's, um, it's basically like, I don't want to call it City of Brass, because City of Brass take, makes you deal, uh, take damage. But you, it's a, basically five color, uh, it's a, it's a, like a Wooburg land for instants and sorceries. Pretty neat. And can go into any deck. Like, anyone can play this thing. Welcome, Robin. Really appreciate, re really appreciate you're over. You like it to print? It's fair. Free man of any color. No storm abuse. Uh, storm abuses the rituals, not like lands. Not a big deal. Very doable. How fair is it? It's very fair. I like it. We're printing it. We're gonna, sh we're gonna print it. We're not gonna shred it. Not shred worthy. Oh, what do we got here? This was. Oh, this was. <laughs> this was. Uh, what's it called? Uh, retweeted from another. We have. Is there another AI? Oh, it's AI generated art. What's the card here? Cryptic armor. Uh, it's for four mana. I'm gonna have to take my word for it. When whenever when when, I, when cryptic armor enters the battlefield, you gay for life. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, each opponent loses for a life. I'm assuming this also means gain. Anyway, it's a very doable card. Very doable. Moving on, we've got a cursed center. What the hell is this? So it smells things. 
I guess it's good at smelling things. I don't know how well it will do it with its mouth gaping open. Oh, we've got a red four generic three four minotaur warrior. You blitz for a red two generic. Let's blitz again. It's like put it into play. Does it get sacked at end of turn or something? Whenever you play a land, you may pay two. If you do return a cursed center from your graveyard to your hand. All right, that's pretty cool. It's not, com and oh, I think it dies. Pretty underwhelming, but fine. Definitely blitz, haste, sacked. Oh yeah, the draw card. This is a card drawing engine then. So you put lands in play, you pay two, you get it back. You could re-blitz it out. It's, I mean, you're soaking up a lot of mana for this. You paid five mana to get this in play, and you're basically gonna pay five mana to get this sort of like combo. It's busted and limited. But we're not judging it in limited. We're judging it here. This is a real card. Very, very real. <laughs> Ragavan Big Daddy. Ragavan's uncle. Big uncle. Not monkeying around. Oh, we got Planeswalker. Okay, we got Praetic Purzum. <laughs> I wanna say this. This name was somehow inspired by Prismatic Prism, but, you know, this is a wild guess. Uh, red, red, blue, two generic for a five loyalty. Junai, beautiful picture. Pay one, so not pay one, uh, plus one loyalty, create a one, one red goblin creature token. Uh, that's it. All right, you get goblins. I didn't know, I didn't know the Praetic Prism was, uh, so one with the, the goblins. Minus three, each player exiles the top two cards of their library. You may play those cards this turn. Again, you do have to cast those cards. Minus six, take an extra turn after this one. This card looks incredibly fair. Oh, it's only two, it's only actually two activations off from the extra turn ability, but you sack the Praetic Purism. I mean, it's literally five mana, make a goblin, take an extra turn. It's one of the most coherent AI planeswalkers ever. Yeah, I know, those planeswalkers. And not too many abilities either. Voitech likes it. It's Zybers. You might you may play cards from there. Yeah, probably. Each player exiles the top two cards of their library. You may play. Yeah, you can you can play cards uh, exiled from your opponent's libraries. Um, but only this turn. So it's a one-time deal. So you go minus three. Ugh. You gotta sink a lot of loyalty into that one. Nidira. Nidira loves this card. Actually fair. You have to wait a turn after this comes down to get the extra turn. Print it. All right. Sweet card. Funny. No goblins in the picture, though. I don't know. What's this thing over in the bottom left? Is a goblin. We got the tw we got the twisted goblin. It's twisted because it went demir, which is not a very go. No, no. Sorry. It's sort of goblin-y. You know, goblins are black. Okay. We got a black, blue, two generic for a two-five human artificer. Okay, I, everything I knew about this game is all wrong. You, 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 it's funny how often the name completely contradicts the creature type. You may play the shape. <laughs> all right then. Uh, chaos is already ensuing. A creature target player controls have flying and haste. Tap, sacrifice a goblin, regenerate target creature. That's a real ability. Tap, sacrifice, twisted goblin, target, counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays one. That is the most expensive curse catcher of all time. You may play the shape. And it goes into the square hole. Where does the circle go? The square hole. Shape equals rectangle cardboard. <laughs> Chaos ensues. Is the shape good enough though? I don't know. Goblin cosplay? I suppose so. The twisted goblin. Created by the human artificer. The human artificer twist a goblin in a new creature. Chip for Michael Myers. Oh yeah, it sort of looks like Shrek, right? Looks like a Shrek uh, descendant. Alexa, play Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Oh, I have no idea what that is. Legendary, legendary for balance reasons. Would anyone want to play this as your commander? You may play the Shape. For that, I mean, we just gotta shred it. That don't make n no sense. A creature target player controls has uh, flying and haste. Target player, whatever. Moving on, yeah, play the shape so I can cast Chaos Orb. Yeah, anything with a shape and the name. The sphere, the orb, the triangle. This, there's a lot of spheres in this game. Does it have two ears? 
Well, from this side, we it looks like it has two ears. Might have more ears on the other side of its head. Yeah, cubes and cones. It's all loud. All right, moving on. <laughs> what a silly card. Shattered troll. Shattered its soul. And see, it's a human druid. Again. The, incon uh, the inconsistency. All right, black three generic for a 2-2. Two, two. Each player chooses a player who controls more lands than you. Okay, cool. And then that's it. Oh, man. I'm so disappointed. Nah. I was expecting more. Okay, black, black, one generic. Sacrifice a swamp. Create a 5-5 five, five black demon creature token with flying. I was, uh, you know, I was getting excited. You know, I thought some sort of, like, choose a player who controls more lands than you. And I don't know, swap, life total, swap, land, like, lands in play or something. Need to activate. It is uh, quite a hell of an activation. You just make 5-5 five, five demons. Sort of. Oh no, he doesn't even tap. But what's with the colon? Or sorry, the comma. Should have a colon instead. Fair card and technically works. Well, not real. I mean, yeah, I guess so. You just choose a player with more lands than you and just does nothing. Very bizarre. Yeah, cho choose this thing. It do nothing. Cow the dog says print it. All right, let's print it. I agree. We can print. That's pretty fun. It's below Zyber, but you still like it. It's a rare. How do you feel about opening that in a booster pack? Oh, what do we got? I can't even read this card. The art is sort of interfering with the text. Okay, we got the Plaza of Heroes. It's a land. I got to go in. Okay, we can tap to add a colorless. Add one mana. Tap to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana. Only cast a legendary spell. Tap, add one mana of any color among the legendary permanents you control. And then pay three, tap, exile plaza of heroes, target creature, sorry, target legendary creature gains hexproof and indestructible until the I think we did this one. Oh, this is just like a bonus art. We did this one before. Totally, totally playable. Is it a real card? Somehow I don't think <laughs> this activated build with four. Is it a real? Maybe it's a real card. Landfall Pride. Bonus Plaza of Heroes. All right. Kogel, the Tyrant. It's a legendary. We got a lot of lands today. I love lands. Okay, Kogel Tyrant. Uh, sounds like the name of a creature, but apparently this is a legendary land. When, uh, whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to a player, if you control three or more artifacts, you may return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. What? So, if we just deal damage, we just need, like, ah, just, what, what, how hard is that? You play your Mox Diamonds, your Soul Rings, your Lotus Petals, and all this, you bolt someone, and boom. Oh, yeah, it's super at danger. Absol says it Zybers anyway. This is broken, because this is continuous. So, you just keep dealing damage to people, and, like, you can have, you can build a deck with, like, Prismari Command, like, cards that do things but also can deal damage at the same time. You can make a Grixis deck with, uh, like, you know, Coligan's Command, those, like, sort of cards where you have, like, some spell that, do that does things, and, like, I don't think it's hard to have that many artifacts onto the battlefield. In fact, some of those artifacts can help you discard cards to put big fatties in the graveyard. Burn spells galore. Yeah, people laughed at those burn spells, but who's laughing now? Anyway, I love this. I love lands that are broken, but too broken. All right, we're going to look at more AI-generated cards, but we got to first thank our sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com. If you're looking for, you love those fake cards, but if you want to get some real cards, perhaps some promos. A lot, they basically made a promo of everything at this point. Need some promo for us, Will? That's a judge promo. What are promos? Your FNM promos, your judge promos, your secret layer promos. I think Secret Lair is a promo card. You can get, get them at Fusion Gaming Online for 15% off. Check what you're looking for. They probably got it over there. And don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu at checkout for an additional 5% off all your purchases. And, of course, it supports the channel. That's why I keep telling you this stuff every single day. I wouldn't tell you if it didn't support the channel. We're always going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards online. 
I really have no idea how to tie this into uh, an AI episode. But you can play any format you want on Magic the Gather Online Standard, Pioneer, Vintage, Legacy. Uh, you can play niche formats like 93, 94. They got communities get setting up their own leagues and stuff. And you can rent any deck for any of those formats when you're using Mana Traders. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore 1YA. And back to robot nonsense. Robo. Eh, er, beep boop. Uh, whoa, whoa! What is going on here? Just looking at that casting cost. We got Wooberg and an Orzov and an extra two generic mana. Cast. Wand of the Fally or Arworan. It's a zero. It's not even a big creature. It's, it's a z zero three legend, legendary artifact. Line. It's not even a creature, but it has a creature type: zombie boar rabbit. Where's the rabbit in this? What is this like? The ears of the rabbit? Okay. Okay. What does it do? It's it does a lot of things, but not cohe co coherently. Tap. Look at the top six cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand. And the others, <laughs> the others into your head. Uh, it's really not even broke. Well, is it? I don't. It's basically a perpetual draw. Perpetual Professor Oak. Yeah, draw six. I like how they tried to smooth it out, though. You know, it's like the AI is trying to trick you that this is a fair card. First, put two of them into your hand, and the others. Well, they also go into your hand. How about that? If you don't read through the whole card, it looks pretty fair. I don't even know if it dies to- I guess it dies? It doesn't specify that it- No, it does- It's not a creature! It's like the gods! It's like the enchantment gods. I don't know, are they creatures on the stack? Maybe they're creatures on the stack. Yeah, it gets around Narset. If your opponent has uh, Narset, you'd be screwed. Thank you so much, Rob Boy. I really appreciate it. I feel the love. It's a land- Oh my god, how does this work? Yeah, it's a land, so what's the point of the casting cost? If a land has a casting cost, this thing's just all over the place. And it's broken. It's If we can play this on turn one and just tap it. I mean, I don't know. I can't, I can't even tell if it has summoning sickness. I need a judge. We need a level three judge to rule, uh, figure this out. I need to get a judge on this show for at least one of these AI generated shows just to help clear up some of the like rules nonsense here like if a creature has creature types but not actually the creature subtype is it a creature and if i put it in play doesn't have summoning sickness bill's mom okay there's a rule that's there's a rule specifically for this case so what is, is it a creature or what i'll i'll trust your uh i'll trust your judgment we're all the judge yeah where's all the judges i would not be surprised there's a lot of judges in the chat Lands can't have mana cost. Rules don't support it. Well, whatever. We're trying to do our best here, based on what information we have. Okay, it's a land and it's free. It's broken. Basically, it'll blow everyone away. I mean, you probably have to discard to hand size, but like, you know... Zero mana, draw six. That's wild. Probably one of the most wild cards. I like that, though. Put two of them into your hand, and the others into your hand as well. All right, moving on. We got Unicorn. Uh, the Luminous o o -er -er. Uh Black, black, one generic. Sorry, black, black, blue, three generic for a six loyalty Unicorn. So it knows what the creature type is. Plus one. Uh, target creature gains flying until end of turn. Uh, fair. Uh, minus eight. You get an emblem with... Wow, we, we're at the second loyalty ability. We're already talking about emblems. Uh, you get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell, target opponent creates X treasure tokens instead. I don't even know how that helps you. Plus two, you may reveal a human creature card you own from outside the game and put it into your hand. All right, that's fine. Minus eight, you get another emblem with whenever you cast a non-creature spell, each opponent loses three life. Oh God, that's storm food. And luminous or her can't be blocked by artifact creatures. Chaos ensues! I don't think we can print this card. 
Or maybe we, I don't. I don't think we can print this card for this last line. It was almost a real card. Like there was nothing wrong with it up to the uh, up to that. As he's like, oh my god, this is what I was looking for. Print the damn thing. So do you only get the first emblem by paying the plus one, and the other second emblem by paying the whatever we got here? Um, I don't think so. You can take them in any order. It's actually more readable than usual. Ability, <laughs> ability salad, a lot of ones. The last line works, it could be turned into a creature. Okay, so if it, it's turned into a creature, it can't be blocked by artifact creatures. All right, whatever. We'll make it pass. It's a very bizarre card though. Doable with Luxador. All right, Luxador players, go for it. Uh, oh, actual mana confluence. Dire Skilla Comment. And what is this? Is he looking through some sort of... I don't even know what this contraption is. It looked like some sort of eyepiece, but I don't know what this bag is at the end of it. We have a white one generic, one one, a human rogue. Well, at one point he was probably a human rogue. Now he's a skeleton. When Dire Skella Comment dies, it deals three damage to target creature. Very skeleton. In white, very... Root, dude. It works. It does work. I'll give it a pass. A little flavor fail here. It was once a human rogue. I don't. Is this a real thing, or did the AI make this thing up? Or are they just mixing two? It looks like what? It's like a reverse telescope, but I don't know what the hell this thing at the end is. Mr. Skeleton Wild Ride. <laughs> Lim limited playable. Burning. Okay, we have Burning Eyes of the Hidden Samurai. With black, blue, two generic for a 3-2 human wizard. It's a legendary enchantment creature with haste. Uh, if up to X, 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 space, X, less, for as long as you control Burning Eyes of the Hidden Samurai, you may return target creature to its owner's hand. Chaos ensues. Shred it. <laughs> Chaos ensues. Hence, I'm shredding this damn card. Beanpod just trolling here. What part of any of this made sense? It's a censored card. Or maybe we have to fill in the blank here. Maybe this is a mechanic we don't know about. If up to something X lasts for as long as you control... Like, I don't know what to fill in the blank here. I don't even know how to fill this in. That would even make this sentence make sense. Yeah, so now we have to shred away. <laughs> You're very excited for a hasty legendary enchantment creature in the Demir colors. Yeah, it has been redacted. It's been crossed out with a sharpie. Constantly return each creature to its owner's hand, in cell, including itself via targeting. Forces ward. I guess so. This card is a cognito hazard. <laughs> Alright, anyway, I'm trying to do stupid thing. Sorry, Samurai. Okay, Dead to Dream. Ooh, that's a spicy name. That's a great name. That is, uh, I like it. All right, we got a blue three generic for sorcery. Exile target creature you control. Then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. If you do, at the beginning of your next upkeep, destroy that player. Good God! Exile target creature you control. So basically, you can steal the creature. Like, steal someone else's creature. You blink the thing, and you blow them up. So that everyone will have, I mean, if you target this thing, the whoever owns that card uh, has a lot of incentive to destroy it themselves. Yeah, obliterate. Destroy the player. Finally, we have player destruction. No, it says it's Zybris. You do have to work quite a bit to win the game. You have to steal someone else's creature, and then you have to, for four mana, at sorcery speed. It's like, it's probably pretty strong. Cow of the God says, Print, I need it. I steal stuff all the times. Police can't arrest you uh, if it's because of a card effect. Four mana kill you? I like it. It's probably broken. Like, this has to be broken. But, I mean, you ha it's a t it is a two-card combo. But it is a two-card combo in the sense that you have to steal someone else's resources. But this is a clunky combo. Never mind, you lose the game? No, uh, if you you can't blink your own creature because if you do, you'll lose the game. But if you uh, if you do at the beginning of your, your next upkeep, destroy that player. You destroy the other person. Oh, and also, if you do at the beginning of your next upkeep, 
yeah, it, it's, it's, so you, they even have a whole turn, even after it resolves. So actually, they can save themselves by killing you! You have, like, they have a whole turn to kill you. So actually, this is really, this really is fair, in a weird way. Can't find the body, it's in the shadow realm. <laughs> you kill yourself, you, yeah, you, if you blink your own creatures, don't do that. You have to steal someone else's creature, blink that, give it back to them, and then there's one turn of rotate. There's like a whole turn uh, for them to kill you. I mean, you become a huge target after that. Only from that one player, though. It says return the cre return the creature. Is it uh return? No, it says exile target creature you control. You control, not that you own. So you have to take someone's creature. You control that creature. Then you return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. If you do, I'm assuming it's a, it's referencing the owner. If you do, at the beginning of your uh, your next upkeep, destroy that player, whoever that player is. Otherwise, it would just say destroy you. You die. Anyway, that's wild. I think that's the coolest card that we can make a pass. It's not. It's probably I don't know. It may, maybe it's broken, but not really. Nikshu has actually read the card, I know. I read the card correctly this time. And I think I've interpreted it correctly as well. Turn three, let threads of disloyalty. And then turn four, dread to dream. Or sorry, dead, dead to dream. You dreamt hard and now you're dead for it. All right, cool card. Uh, Tropical Eye, ooh, that's nice. Too bad, it will never happen though. I mean, unless they make more proxies like this. Never gonna happen. Okay, Scorch of Emergence. Red, red, red for a 2-5 Sahimi legendary creature. I don't know if Sahimi is a creature type. I think that's more of like a Planeswalker name. Vigilance. A red, red for generic. Put a plus one, plus zero counter on each creature your opponents control. And it's got channel. <laughs> Why would you help your opponents creatures? Anyway, it's got channel. Blue, blue. Sacrifice, Scorch of Emergence. Destroy all creatures. Good God! Just blow them all up. They be they, including this one. How does channel work? I don't remember this ability. Channel, channel, channel. Um, sounds like a draft ability. <laughs> scorch of print for the name alone. It's time to scorch the scorch of emergence, emerging and scorching. Wrath for uh, red, 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 blue, blue is fair. I guess for a red wrath, you discard a channel. I think channel has no rules associated with it. It's word flavor. Okay, so it's their own ability. It sounds like an ability that already exists, but I don't know. Channel means I want to say it discards the card. Channel means discard this card. Channel makes you discard the card. You can't channel if it's already in play. So okay, whatever. I don't know how this card works, so I'm shredding the damn thing. It don't make sense to me. Phantasmal Affinity. Oh, we got a black, blue, one generic for a 2-1 Glyphenor. Pay zero. Phantasmal Affinity gains death touch until end of turn. Why did I have to activate the ability? Oh yeah, channel is for Boseju. So, so it's just a blue, blue for board wipe? Well, let's move back. So it's just blue, blue channel. Oh, but we can't sack it. Because it's already... Okay, so it just doesn't work. It just, it like, really doesn't work. You can't sacrifice something that wasn't in play. And it sounds like sacking it is part of... Part of the cost. I can't pay both of them, so it doesn't actually work. You can only read... You can only pay one of them. Uh... Yeah, anyway, uh, I guess... <laughs> Whatever, yeah, sure. Demir 2-1 Death Toucher. Infinite Times. There's some... There are some abilities that get broken if you can activate an ability perpetually. I guess that will work in this case, but outside of that, this is pointless. Okay, what do we got here? We got, oops. We got this, the Symmetrid Archer for a white three generic. It's a human rogue. It's a three, three creature with reach. Has an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card. And whenever Symmetrid Archer attacks, Return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Cool, that's pretty cool. And uh, on the other side, it's a very bizarre land. It's the Miz Miser of Sands. Here's the battlefield tapped. When Miser of Sands enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. 
Uh, that's a huge downside. Oh, and it's really fair. Okay, so it adds two mana, but you return a land sheet back to your hand. You can sack it to add double red. There's a lot of cards. There's a lot of words on this thing, and I think they are all fine. This might be a strictly better... There's some... It's like a Karoo land, actually. Now that I think about it. It's just, a, it's just a Karoo land. But you can, like, you have the option to, like, uh... You have a creature attached to it. And, uh, you can also sack it for double red if that somehow matters. Anyway. Yeah, pretty neat. We have a Plateau. Uh... Tempered Frost Watch. We have the Hybrid Gruel Mana. It's an Aura. Enchant Creature Luster Walk. What the hell does that mean? What am I lusting over? Luster Walk. So I can't be blocked by... I don't know. I don't even know how to fill in the blank for this thing. Yeah, Luster Walk. You read it right. What are we lusting over? Nice picture. Tempered Frost Watch. Nothing makes sense in this image. For all those... Is it like a Yu-Gi-Oh reference? For all those Yu-Gi-Oh luster players? Okay. <laughs> Unblocked by lusters. Is it a Yu-Gi-Oh crossover? Okay, so for the Yu-Gi-Oh fans... I mean, I, I don't get this reference at all. So for that, uh, screw this card. Luster. A gentle sheen or soft glow, especially that of a partly reflective surface cannot be blocked if you have something that's shiny I suppose if your opponent controls a card worth over a hundred bucks unblockable <laughs> if it lost it oh is that like is that their name for foils like it, you you have like you have like foil walk or something has to be foil to luster it up okay that's cool yeah, it's, it punishes people for foils. So playing with foils in tournaments isn't free. Strictly worse. If they printed this card, I mean, the price of foils would collapse. Because, like, there, it wouldn't be strategically relevant. I mean, it would be strategically relevant to be playing with non-foil cards. Nimble Rogue, thanks so much for the super chat. First stream I've caught. It's been fun. Great. I hope you enjoyed yourself. It does in Zyber. It lusters. All right, well... Yeah, it could be... It could, it could work in an unset. Alright, moving on. We got the Mind Born Summons. It's a land. It's a it's a Mitra's factory for crying out loud. Sorry, workshop. It's a Mitra's workshop. Pay one, Mind Born Summons becomes a 1 1 all warrior creature with vigilance until end of turn. It's still a land. So it's like it's a Mitra's workshop and some sort of Mitra's factory all in one, because it turns into a creature. In terms of war, becomes a 1 1 old warrior creatures with vigilance until end of turn. It's all the warrior creatures. Pay X, tap. Mindborn summons deals X damage, target player or play. Get the hell out of here. That is so broken. It danger. Two out of three of these abilities, it danger. And the, um, uh, and the, the second one, chaos ensues. So this is easily. Look at all the skulls in the in the image. That's right. Ha that's what happens when you cross the mind born summons. The triple danger, colorless damage. <laughs> what a great mana sink! And uh, and if several mind born summons can help pump up the the other abilities. Mind born summons, Urza's tower that can an <laughs> that can animate and deal damage. Trondex really needs some boost. Danger, but not word salad. It's not the worst. Anyway. God, that was so awful. Uh, D up for death. Yeah, pony it up for death. Uh, white, one generic for an instant. Add a red. A black and red. Exile, D up for death from your hand. What? Uh, double the next time you control another target creature. There are no good mountains. They were gently for them interesting, said Braids, Dementia Summoner. I'm sure that is something that Braids said. Anyway, pretty... Uh, the card makes no sense, so I shred it. It's Ash from Pokemon. There's his Charizard. And he's trying to become a champion. All right, we got the Fire Red Champion. Where's the Pokeball? 
Black Black for generic for a 5-4 avatar with flying. When Fire Red Champion enters the battlefield, return up to one other target creature card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And we can pay a red Fire Red Champion gains Trample and Tentacle Turn. This is a real card. It almost feels like a Charizard. There is your Charizard. You <laughs> Yeah, people are trying to conjure a Charizard. You may play any card. Well, there we are. There we are. Here's our Charizard. Come on. We all know the real Charizard is Shivan Dragon. It's the OG Red Dragon. Completely undoable. What's X, though? Uh, return up to one other target creature card from your mana with mana value X or less from your graveyard. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that don't work. That's too bad. It was close. X not defined. X must be zero. Or one divided by zero. It literally brings a Pokemon into the battlefield. It's too powerful for AI. Yeah. X has no value. It do nothing. Oh, well. What is this? Whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, they may draw a card. I don't care for these plane chase cards. Uh, we've got the Mongoimed Crab. It looks like someone punished a dwarf and turned them into a crab. And now they're a crab for the rest of their life. They're a 5-mana Gnome Warrior Artifact. Uh, counter target instant or sorcery spell. That's not how artifacts work. As far as I'm concerned, this would counter itself when you put it on the stack. It's like, I'm going to play Mongoimed Crab and effectively says counter target. Oh no, we can't even counter itself. Counters instants and sorceries. Okay, let's see if the flavor text clears things up. Vampires of the Frition with music. Pin Calic and Dak is compliance. He haunted up to 46 Ishas, his guard. It makes come Breepard companions. Very wild. Just give it flash. <laughs> yeah. Give play creatures as though you have flash. Get that OG Teferi in there. Uh, the mirror survivors and you know they need to survive those poor mirror players uh always always in trouble all right we got nine mana for an 11 11 scarecrow giant with flying when mirror survivors enters the battlefield put target creature on top of its owner's library does that work okay so when mirror survivors enters the battlefield you put target creature on top of its... that's a pretty strong ability but it's nine mana it's an 11 11 flyer i think it's cybers i think it's pretty neat it's this is a limited bomb. Effectively, you get to a nine mana. I mean, this is backbreaking. It's card disadvantage. It's card disadvantage for your opponent because they're going to draw the exact same thing that they just had on the battlefield. And more scarecrows. It's a scarecrow giant. Look how big that thing is. It's so big that it might as well have flying. It's basically consuming the entire uh, the t in the entire sky. Fair and get for everyone. You like the flavor? I don't know. Anything. Is that really flavorful for a scarecrow? I guess it scares things away, right? Woo! Get out of here. Strong but playable. All right, it's Zybers. All right, we're going to ship it. Oh, that's sweet. The mirror survivors. Why? Hold on. It has nothing to do with mirrors, though. Maybe the mirrors are inside the scarecrow. They're the stuffing. Pollen Racklidge. A red one generic 3-2 mutant goblin mutant. Flash and phasing. When Pollen Racklidge attacks, create a treasure token. Wait a minute, it's a 3-2 for... Uh, it's a 3-2 Flash creature. This might... No, but it has phasing. Does it phase the first turn? So, like, if I flash and play at my opponent's turn, it's going to phase out on my turn, right? It's, like, literally going to suck. So, it does give me... It's like a crappy Rogavon, really. But it does have flash. Pollen and Zyber. <laughs> pollen Zybers? You like Pollen, huh? Discount. This is like. Yeah, this is Ragavan at home. If you can't afford the real Ragavan, you can take this one. Seems fine. It's fair. It can only attack every other turn. Yeah. And, like, it, the first. It might have flash, but it's pretty pointless because, like, you can't even attack with it on the turn that it. Like, the, the following turn that you play this card. It's Ragavan's. Blakey big brother. I guess so. Alright, the art is great. Yeah, he is. Uh, he is. Li the sky's ri literally in a pollen field. Better not be allergic. 
Weeded Trans Ring. Oh, we got the blue, blue enchantment. I love me my anything hard devotion to blue. With imprint, when Weeched Trans Ring enters the battlefield, create two four four red red, red, red dragon creature tokens with flying and ward. What the hell? When it's imprint, when the, what the hell does that mean? Aren't you supposed to put something underneath it in exchange for an ability? Yeah, that's not that's not how imprint works. All right, what else does it do? Uh, green sack a creature, return Weeched Trans Ring from your graveyard to your hand, then draw a card for each card discarded this way. We didn't even discard cards. This card is like almost doing things really broken, but not really. The words don't make sense. That's not how any of this card has worked. Imprint is exile. I know, imprint exile a card from your hand, and then you get an ability. Uh, probably getting two 4-4 four, four red dragon creature tokens with ward one. The m the more membrane human 2-1 creature. Uh, whenever more membrane attacks or blocks, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control with a death touch... Sorry, whenever a creature you control with death touch deals combat damage to a player, you may put a plus one plus one counter on more membrane. It's getting a lot of counters actually. So first it attacks, it gets a counter, you deal damage. Whenever a creature with death touch deals damage to a player. Oh, it doesn't have death touch itself, so you actually have to have something else have death touch and it gets bigger. Really weird. No, you know, it's not free to cast. If it has zero in the mana cost, then it's free to cast. It has a mana value of zero, but it does not cost nothing. So you actually have to cheat this in play with Aether Vial or As Foretold or one of a, a Cascade spell. So it actually is really... Okay, it's... Okay, we can print it. But it's really bad. I mean, you'd really have to go out of your way to play this damn card. It's a Finn staple. Yeah. Not... Yeah, not free. Gotta cheat in play. Yeah, you gotta... <laughs> this is not even worth cheating in play! What a... What a pathetic card. It is a human. So you know what? You could put in a human deck. And just put it, you know, turn one vial, tap vial, put directly in play. It's not that strong, in my opinion. Okay, we got Lady Talisman. We got a three mana two two. Uh, it's a artifact creature, Frexian Human Warrior. Look how strong she is. All right. Uh, pay five, tap target. Force becomes a blue swamp. That is very doable. It is not strategically useful at all. But you can do that. It can be tap, pay five, tap target force becomes a blue swamp. Uh, we got Mont Mont Rogue King. Thanks so much for your super chat. Best live show on YouTube. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. We do a lot of fun stuff here. Yeah, target land becomes a blue swamp. I don't know where. <laughs> I mean, it probably doesn't help you. If I'm making your land a blue swamp, you probably can't use it. Troll green players. Not until yeah, it is permanent. So it does have that going for it. Slowly turn all your opponent's lands into swamps. And they be blue. Because otherwise they're just colorless. Blue swamps still give black mana. Yep! Yep, they should. The color of the card shouldn't affect its ability. It's this it's the subtype that matters, and it's uh, the type is a swamp. Okay, how the god says finally support for my blue swamp deck. Okay, it's it's doable. I wouldn't say it's Zybers, but it's doable. Oh, we gotta look at we gotta look at one more. All right, we're gonna finish off with a progenitor of winds. That nice uh, eight-bit looking art. Okay, we got green, green, three generic for a three-five dinosaur with partner. As long as you control a blue permanent, which you could get with the lady talisman. Uh, you may cast Progenitor of Winds from your graveyard. Not bad. Players can cast spells. Oh, God. It's like the game just shuts down when you put this thing in play. Uh, also, you can't cast spells. So it's just over. But you, oh, so you, it's just abilities from there on out. Okay, so red for generic. Create a 1-1 one, one green Frexen spells creature token. Sure, spells, I guess, can be a creature type. So, if you have five men in play, effectively, so long as you're the only one who can activate abilities, you will just destroy everybody. So, you shut the game down, and you just make, inf I wouldn't say infinite, but you slowly, one turn at a time, make 
more green Frexian spell creature tokens and overwhelm your opponents. You can still check. Yeah, you can still play abilities. That all works. So abilities on creatures, abilities in hand. Uh, all abilities are all negates itself. Player can't, can't spell. Well, it, I think it only matters once it's on once it's in play. After that, it doesn't matter. Card is hilarious. I think it's hilarious too. And it's broken. Broken as hell. All right. That's it for Coffee and MTG today. Thank you so much for joining me. We had a lot of great cards to look at today. If you want to be part of the show, you got to be here Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks, everyone, for your support. I appreciate everyone who's a member on YouTube, a patron on Patreon, or anyone who super chats to be part of the show, part of the action. And most importantly, I thank everyone who shows up in the morning for your amazing feedback and analysis. People like Emil, we got Nidira, we got uh, Madeus. We got Jonathan V, Erland, Lee Fisher, Mr. Leon, Steve Cooper, James Stone Toads, King Ginger, Cow the God, J Poe, Rotboy, Gray Fasks. <laughs> uh, we got Spectral Maniac, Stan Ryan. Uh, because without all of you guys, I'd have no show. So, as usual, my coffee crew, I keep brewing up them coffees. Whether it be hot cocos or cappuccino, frappuccinos, and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and 